Hi guys, I uh, just wanted to show you a BH2, uh, BHT U scope that I uh, recently picked up on eBay. This thing uh, came in and everything needs service on it so far. I have cleaned this up. This was totally locked up and would not rotate. But what I wanted to show you basically was just kind of if you buy a scope, a BH2 scope from eBay that, uh, you know, one that hasn't been used and sold as parts and whatever, this is probably what you're going to get, this kind of a thing. To start with, this is very stiff. Um, obviously, you can't feel what I'm feeling here, but this this is way stiffer than it should be. If I loosen up the uh, tension adjustment, it gets a little looser, but it's groaning and squeaking, and it's just really nasty feeling. The uh, fine focus is doesn't feel too horrible, but uh, of course, focus is terrible. Okay, what I'm going to do first, in order to just evaluate what kind of what kind of condition this thing is in, in terms of its maintenance, is I'm going to pull off these uh, four little screws here, take the back cover off, and uh, the reason for doing that is because once I get this back cover off, that will expose a gearbox inside, and then I can pull that gearbox out. And at that point, I'll be able to determine how how stiff the coarse focus mechanism really is, and how bad the uh, sliding focus block is as well. Okay, now that the back is off, let's uh, rearrange the camera a little bit so hopefully you can see inside there and see what's going on. But I'm just going to reach in here. And I'm going to loosen up these four hex screws holding the gearbox in place okay they're all loose now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach around and I'm going to hold the focus block or actually I'm just going to rotate it down since it does move <coughs> once I get it down to the bottom then I don't have to worry about it dropping when I pull the gearbox out so now I'm going to loosen up these screws and totally remove all four of them Okay, so now this is out, and uh, I'll set this aside and I'll talk about this in a minute. At this point, these knobs are decoupled from this focus block, so any stiffness I, I feel here now is literally just within that mechanism. And like I say, that's, that's very stiff. I've seen them so bad that you literally can't turn these things. And when it comes time to take them apart, you pull the ball bearings out, and they're literally just a solidified glob, and there's no there's no grease at all left to whatever. There's no grease properties, no lubricating properties at all left to what the to what was put in there as the original grease. Now, if I turn this around. Zoom in a little bit so you can see the focus block perhaps a little bit better. If I raise this thing up and just let it fall, you can see it does fall under the influence of gravity, but it's uh, it's slow and it hesitates. And this is uh, this is very typical of a focus block on an eBay scope. I'm not uh, I'm not saying this would not work. It probably would actually work with this particular focus block. You know, disregarding the focus mechanism and, every, and everything else that's got wrong with it. This would probably be marginally acceptable, but man, I sure wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to sell this to somebody in this condition. So it's going to totally it's gonna come apart and be totally clean, re-greased, put back together. I have the uh, turret, the nose piece turret here. This is a five-position BHTU reverse turret, and uh, it's not sticky. It's not gummy. It's not stiff to turn. But it feels squeaky. It feels like the bearing balls in there are literally dry. 
So, you know, once again, this will come apart and be totally clean and put back together. Now, this gearbox is typical of what you'll see on an eBay scope. It's, uh, if we could focus it, it's very stiff, as you can see. Not sure why we're not focusing. Okay, there we go. Okay, it's very stiff, as you can see. I can just barely rotate this. It's all I can do to rotate this without the without the skin coming off of my thumb. To be honest, it is very stiff. So that's basically what uh, that's basically what you're going to get if you just buy in a, a BH2 a BH2 scope off of eBay. It's been uh, unused for unused or at least neglected for 20 or 30 years. You will. Uh, almost definitely see this kind of stuff. Had somebody actually tried to use this scope, they would have found that there was hysteresis in the in the focus in the fine focus mechanism. As you would adjust the focus and try to turn it around, you would have to turn a fair amount of you'd have to turn this a fair amount just to get the focus to reverse because the uh, the influence of gravity on the focus mechanism would not be overcoming the mechanical backlash in the gear train as it should. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in a couple of miscellaneous clips that I've found on my uh, computer hard drive, uh, basically garbage, but uh, <laughs> there were things I shot at various times that I thought I was going to use for something and didn't, but I think I can include them here, um, just as an example of, like for instance, this gearbox, this, you've seen how it is, uh, to show you how, how a bad one is and how a good one is and whatever, so there will be a couple clips following that. and. Um, other than that, I think I'm going to declare this part zero of my eight-part series on uh, servicing a BHTU microscope, just to show you kind of why we're servicing those, uh, why we service them, and what you can expect if you don't service them. And so, you know, if you go, if you decide to buy a scope on eBay like this, just go into it with your eyes wide open that you're not going to get a scope that you can use. That's not how it works. If you're going to get a scope that you can use, you're going to be paying. Eight hundred, nine hundred, twelve hundred dollars for a scope that somebody's worked on. Um, but if you just go out there and buy a two hundred dollar stand, or in this case, actually this was an eighty dollar stand with shipping, you buy this. This is what you'll get. Okay, the purpose of this video is to uh, show what a focus uh, sliding focus block looks like when they get stiff on an Olympus BH2 microscope. First off, uh, in order to evaluate this, you have to remove the back cover, and then once you've done that, you need to remove the gearbox that normally is mounted in here. And once you've done that, that decouples these knobs from the sliding focus block. And then to evaluate the focus block for stiffness, what you do is you raise it, and let it fall, and in this case what we're seeing is one that I would consider marginal but probably acceptable. If it gets much stiffer than this then it needs to be torn down and rebuilt. Okay this is an arm off of a BHS scope actually. Uh, as you can see it's been overhauled. Uh, I took the back cover off of it right here. And I took uh, the gearbox out of it. So right now the knobs are totally decoupled from the sliding focus mechanism, the sliding focus block. So the focus block on this one uh, has been taken apart, cleaned, and re-greased. And this is how it should work. You raise it to the top, let go. It should fall pretty quick. Sometimes they're a little more sluggish than that, and that's okay, but they should not be erratic and they should not stick. Okay, these are a couple of gearboxes uh, out of BH2 scopes. The gearbox is the thing that couples the focus knobs with the sliding focus block. This one here has basically been cleaned and overhauled. It doesn't yet have grease on the teeth, just so it didn't make a mess, but you can see that this thing turns very freely. Not a problem. This here is out of an old eBay scope. Probably hasn't been serviced in many years, like most of them. And, as you can see, very stiff. 
it doesn't break the toothpick, but it's pretty darn close. And when they, when they get stiff like this, you'll see issues in the hysteresis of the focus. You'll find that you turn the focus one direction, and then in order to go back and focus a little bit, you have to turn the knob quite a bit before before that before the focus will reverse. And the reason for that is because these gears are sticking. Ordinarily, when these things work normally, gravity is what preloads the gears so that the effects of the mechanical backlash are not in the functioning of the scope, if that makes sense. But uh, what when they're like this, um, gravity doesn't gravity isn't able to keep the teeth gear teeth in constant contact and when you reverse it you literally have to walk back through that mechanical backlash before the focus changes. Okay, I have here two complete uh, pinion assemblies from BH2 microscopes. I think these were probably from BHTUs that I got from eBay, uh, although I'm not 100% sure of that. But this one here is one that I've uh, totally taken apart and cleaned and re-greased and so this is how the thing should work. This this gear should be real easy to turn. And you can see that there's no effort at all required. It feels smooth like butter. This one here is straight out of a microscope that I got. It's had no maintenance at all and I don't know if you can tell how hard I'm bearing down on that to turn it but that's really difficult. For instance the good one I can easily roll on the bench top by the gear. This one, not so much. And if that's not convincing enough, uh, I can easily turn the gear here with a toothpick. This one, not really. So if you buy a scope off eBay, there's a very good chance it's going to be like this and it's going to need some work. It's not hard to fix, but it does take a little time. That's it. Thanks. Okay, I have a couple of uh, focus shafts, coarse focus shafts out of BH2 scopes. Uh, these also have the uh, coarse knob and the gear cluster still intact. And I wanted to show the difference. Uh, this here is a relatively stiff gear. You can't probably see it by the way I'm spinning it here. This is a, out of a eBay scope. It's not been well maintained. Here's one that has been fairly well maintained in it as you can see is really easy to turn essentially no resistance at all whereas this one adds a significant amount of resistance um, I don't know that I can really show it to you very well but you, yeah, you can see the uh, you can see the toothpick bending under the bending under the strain to turn it whereas over here totally that's not the case <laughs> 